You know what? Hmm. That picture behind Ashley is crooked. Which one? The one directly behind her. That one? Mm-hmm. Tilt. Mm-hmm. You're a good one. No! <laughs> Le tilt. Now it's a <laughs> I want to punch you. <laughs> Hello and welcome. We are the Ladies of Strange. I'm Ashley. I'm Tiffany. And I'm Rebecca. Thank you for joining us each week as we discuss the history, mystery, and theory of all things questionable, odd, and eerie. Well, that was a somewhat normal intro. Bravo. Now let's see if we can get through the outro. Nope. Without. Uh, Are you going to be able to say your part? I try and I always get stepped on. I wonder who does that. You do. No. (laughs) Go back and listen. (laughs) It's always you cutting in. She does. Need, she has to listen multiple times. Things need to stop. <laughs> and then at some point, I'm like, I'm going to listen to that later. <laughs> eh, not our problem. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, are you guys ready for a topic? Just a topic? Just a topic. You're not going to tell us a story that goes along with the topic? It's not really a story. It's more of a conspiracy theory. Yes! Oh. So I texted Ashley and Tiffany. I'm like, okay, you guys have a choice this week. Do we want ridiculous or funny? Pause there. I was so disappointed in you, my love. Because by the time I looked at my phone, you had already responded. And the response was not ridiculously funny. Sorry? Question that? Wow. <laughs> it's not my fault you're slow to respond. I don't check my phone much. Again, not my problem. Anyway, not my circus. So Ashley said ridiculous. I'm like, okay, we're going with ridiculous. So today we are talking about flat earth. Oh, oh my God. I'm so excited. <laughs> you have no idea how I'm excited I am about this. It was so much fun this. researching this and I drank a lot. Um, <laughs> Rebecca's a flat earther. Here we go. All right. Do oh. I have to explain what the flat earth theory is? Go for it. For real this time, no, but put it out there just in case. (laughs) So for those of you who don't know, the idea is our Earth isn't round. And instead, the Earth is flat because we don't have any objective evidence showing that the Earth is actually round. (laughs) This is going to be a tough one (laughs) to get through. (laughs) I'm so excited. (laughs) So thrilled. This is like the Ouija board, but flip-flopped. I like this. I know. (laughs) Give me all the details. <laughs> Tiffany's like, I want all the attention. Ash is like, oh, God. Why? Why is there more are they this way? Oh, yes. You picked the topic, so technically this is your fault. I did not pick the topic. And I said ridiculous or funny. This was going to be a topic. And we got ridiculously funny. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> Premature bitching, Tiffany. You got what you wanted anyway. Sup, guys? All right. So the whole... Th- theory behind flat earth is that it uses an empirical approach when gathering information in other words it relies on the information you can directly observe using your senses okay (laughs) on board so far it's it's so much fun (laughs) ashley gave me a very judgmental look not judging you and tiffany's like sign me up for the cult exactly (laughs) you have cookies so what does flat earth actually look like um i'm nothing nothing because it's not real um no <laughs> who's I've that seen, you on look for this topic normally i'm on ashley's side but i'm so excited i'm gonna pretend to be a flat earther um <laughs> i've seen a bunch of different pictures of what it might look like so think of it as sort of like a paper plate it's a disc or a frisbee or whatever round object you prefer it has a diameter of 12,510 miles and a circumference of 78,603 miles so for reference, the sphere model ha- has a diameter of 7,917.5 and a circumference of 24,901. And that was mostly for me, not for y'all. That's not... I want I want to be on board with this one for the episode. That doesn't make sense. What do you mean? That's not big enough. It's a ball. To be the flat earth? No, no, no. No, she said the flat earth first. Yeah, flat earth was first. Flat earth has a diameter of 12,510. The spherical earth has a diameter of 7,917.5. Got it. Got it. Got it. Do you? Nope. (laughs) (laughs) That just doesn't seem like it would make sense. It does. It doesn't seem big enough. Anyway. I'm going to start my own conspiracy. So the earth is a bigger flat surface. Your conspiracy would just be like the Backstreet Boys are gods. No, that's a, that's your cult. That's fact. 
Okay. Back off my religion. Back to flat earth. Got it. Okay. So the way it's oriented is you have the North Pole in the center and the edges would be Antarctica. Oh so imagine, you, <laughs> imagine you took the globe and just quarter, sort of squished it into a plate. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so Antarctica is actually an ice wall that rises about 150 feet above sea level, preventing the oceans from falling off the edge. Under, uh, well, they've thought of everything, haven't they? Because obviously you need something to keep it from falling right. off the you edge. You need a lip on your paper plate or else everything's just going to go cattywampus. Exactly. I also feel like that's not tall enough. That's like a 15-story building and that's not tall enough. How do, tall does it need to be? I mean, waves can get pretty large. Exactly. It doesn't, I mean, like, it doesn't have to keep all the water in, just enough that we still have oceans. <laughs> oh, that See, it's not global warming. See, now you're turning me. <laughs> Not global warming. The water is just falling off of the earth. <laughs> all right, now that we're all on board, this is not a global warming. The water is just falling off the earth. That's an excellent point. I didn't think of that. We, we're going to have to investigate. Okay. The ice wall is several hundred meters thick. It is almost vertical and was discovered by Sir James Clark Ross, a British naval officer. He is one of the first explorers who attempted to locate the South Magnetic Pole. And instead found out the earth was flat. When did he find this? I couldn't get a year. That's not the point. Okay. Um, yesterday. So we don't know what's behind this wall because we can't, we aren't actually able to observe it. So I was able to find this great YouTube documentary talking about how we aren't able to explore Antarctica like we should. We aren't able to explore this edge of the earth because governing bodies don't allow us to. Oh, Aliens. man. Dude, if you throw in aliens with this, like, you may actually have me on board. <laughs> Sorry, no aliens. Damn. Well, I'm on board for the episode. But again, we haven't really, like, observed aliens. So what do we know? So the flat earth theory is not directly associated or unassociated with religion, as some religions, even today, uphold the flat earth theory, while others, like Christianity, used to believe it, but came around. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Bringing it full circle. <laughs> so they oh. circumnavigated that opinion. <laughs> oh, what? You're cute. <laughs> All right, question. Yeah. What religions still believe the earth is flat? I couldn't find. Stop asking important questions. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry. I forgot. I've got to be. So what you're feeling right now? Is you every episode? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. I love this subject so much. Um, <laughs> okay, so what's under the flat earth? Space? We, we don't know. A fish. Because again, we can't, we oh, can't get right. over the wall. The, well, so there's... Angry fish with the lights on their head. The anglers? Yeah, sure. <laughs> oh no. The angry fish with the, the lights angler on fish. their head. I was thinking about the space whales from Doctor Who. Anyway. Continue. So there's some theories that like past this ice wall... It is actually like a wall and there's nothing beyond it. Or it's just continuous like wasteland of icy Ice. Arctic, believing it gets to absolute zero at some point. Do you guys know what absolute zero is? I'm assuming the it's the absolute to end Okay, it's the absolute zero. coldest that you can get and it's based off Cal the calorie free vodka. Kelvin scale. <laughs> <laughs> Not the calorie, the Kelvin. So to put it into reference, uh, so freezing point. Please stick with me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Absolute zero. I thought okay. it was like a new. Water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which is zero degrees Celsius, which is 273.15 degrees Kelvin. How do you just know this? I had the first two. Right. <laughs> Sorry. So absolute zero is when Kelvin reaches zero. Why is Kelvin so important? Because that's when he's it's the best theorized Jonas. that atoms stop moving. Because he's the <laughs> best Jonas. I'm sorry. <laughs> you are in my territory with flat earth and kookiness, so I'm thrilled. Flat earth, miss, what have I done? <laughs> I missed that whole last part of your conversation there, okay. Rebecca. Kelvin Hold is on. important. L oh, wait. No. Tiffany's got it. Kelvin is important. Because free freezing point is zero degrees Celsius, Celsius, yep. mm -hmm. 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. But the Kelvin number is much larger. 270 something. 273.15. Yep. So when that gets to zero, the other two are like, <laughs> so. And do we know what happens at zero? 
stuff. We don't because we've never reached it. And really? Yeah. We've never gotten that cold. And we theorize that Adam stopped moving. Oh. oh. So there's that idea where, you know, past the Arctic wall, it's just cold wasteland. And we don't know if there's other like livable areas. We don't know what's beyond here because governing bodies won't allow us to research it. And that underneath the earth, it's it's rocks, essentially. So what I pictured in my mind when you were talking about this, when you said absolute zero, Mm -hmm. I just pictured um, like the earth going on forever until it hit like it go on for infinity, which would be absolute zero. That's where my mind went. I was talking about the cold wasteland. I know. Anyway, so there's a belief that a flat wor- earth will sit on a pile of rocks. There's also the fact that since we can't actually see what's under the earth, we should make assumptions. And there's also the belief in the cosmic tortoise who carries the world on its shell. <gasps> like the space whale. I like that theory. But back to the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> if it's set on a pile of rocks, then what's under the rocks? And is it really flat? If it's a pile of rocks underneath it. It's flat to us. Well, right now it's flat to us, but it's not flat. How do you think we get mountains? Are they saying Does that... The rocks just pop up. <laughs> Are they Sometimes. saying that, like, the Earth is not in space? I, mm. Oh, my God. <laughs> I've never made you like that. I'm excited. Okay. See, when I was doing this research, I was trying to, like, get ready for every single question they y'all ha- could possibly have, and I did not consider okay, that one. here's the deal. Space is above us. Your brain works in a very logical manner, and I appreciate you trying to step out of it with this one, and you're doing a great job. It's just really hard to get to our level of out of it, out of logic. I'm also, if space is above us, then how do the planets and the stars that appear above us rotate? That's an excellent question. If it's flat. That I will answer in a later (gasps) bullet point. Oh. Space is round. Earth is not. (laughs) So like first, a dome, a bubble. I'm sorry, I'm so excited. <laughs> Are you just naming round things? No, I just a dome, a bubble, a bouncy ball. No, I'm just picturing pops. Like we're in a snow globe or something, and like spaces, and that that would be your dream come true, wouldn't it? No, that would be like suffocating. How do you know we're not? Can we talk about gravity? Yes. yes. In some theories, gravity is an illusion. No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Instead, the disk of the Earth accelerates upwards at a steady speed of 32 feet per second squared. Jesus, we must be really freaking high. It just never stops. It just keeps going, and that's how we have gravity. (laughs) Oh my, just keeps pushing under. It just keeps going up. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I feel like I'm talking. I want y'all to remember the feeling y'all are having right now, because that's how I feel all the time. This is fantastic. I'm sorry you feel that way. There's two explanations I found for this event. The first is dark energy. So dark energy lifts the disk of the Earth at a constant acceleration. This is an unknown energy without a known origin that makes up to 70% of the universe. Okay. The second is the Davis plane. This is a more recent theory stating that there is an infinite plane of exotic matter that pushes in the opposite manner of gravity. So we're being pushed down. No, we're being pushed up because gravity goes down. Right. It so it's towards just like the earth. We're hanging in that middle space of being pushed down and up. Right? I'm sorry, say that again? We're in that like middle space where gravity's pushing down on us and that other force well, is pushing up on us. Well, the constant acceleration pushing up causes the gravity. Okay. So this kind of ties into the idea that gravity isn't actually a thing. Oh, that's right. I forgot we were there. Okay. Yeah. So the idea is that gravity isn't actually a thing. The mass of the object doesn't actually determine what the gravitational pull of the object is. Blah, blah, blah. Divided by the distance squared. Whatever. Yabbity, yabbity, yabbity. The idea is like instead of gravity, objects don't have gravitational pull. So the constant force of the Earth going up causes everything to fall towards the Earth. So, so think of it this way. Imagine you're in your yard and you throw a ball. The ball goes away from you. Mm-hmm. Now imagine you're in a car and you're still in the car and you throw the ball and the ball goes away from you. If you're standing in that field, even though you feel like you're sitting still in the car, both you and the ball are moving. Okay. And I don't know where I was going with this. It's a frame of <laughs> reference. That's where I was going. Okay. I'm pulling it, Tiffany. <laughs> <laughs> We're moving on from gravity. <laughs> but the listeners will have questions. <laughs> You'll still have questions after this. It's fine. I have a lot of questions. So now we're going to talk about the orbit of the sun. Ooh. 
So the sun and moon orbit about 3,000 miles above the Earth. Mm -hmm. So the stars orbit about 3,100 miles above the Earth. Okay. Yep. Through direct... Around what? Above the Earth in a circle. Just around... In a circle above the Earth. Yeah, but like... Above the Earth in a circle. The North okay. Pole. <laughs> it's like a, is this it's like a Mayflower pole. <laughs> they just have all the planets and yeah, the stars. Yeah, have exactly. Strings. Yeah. Okay. Magnets and stuff. <laughs> Through direct observation, we can see that the sun and the moon are at least circular objects. Mm -hmm. um, the sun and the moon have an orbit that's parallel to the disk of the Earth. So... This is a little obvious, but like if the Earth is flat, it would just be like another flat disk above it. It was making it's like a, a mobile floating around a crib. Pretty much. Yes. Yeah. What no, it's <laughs> not. <laughs> so how would seasons work? Seasons. It's an illusion like gravity. <laughs> so north and south stay the same. North is the North Pole. South is the Arctic wall all but around. I so every in every direction. direction is south. Pretty much, yeah. In the northern hemisphere, stick with me on the nomenclature. So the nor northern hemisphere, the half of the disk that's closest to the North Pole. Mm -hmm. The sun is orbiting closer to the North Pole during the summer. And during the winter, it is orbiting closer to the edges of the Earth. But I thought it was... I thought it was like the Mayflower Pole and it stayed in the same... It was, but it, it goes, goes, around goes out, and out and in based on the seasons. Okay, got it. Got it. No, I do have this one now. I'm on board. So now that we know how the sun and the moon works, the next question <laughs> is, <laughs> what about eclipses? Yes. Tell do us. the do the um, the strings get crossed sometimes? And it is that thing where it like spins <laughs> real fast. And <laughs> no, it's better than that. Oh, my God. So lunar eclipses are caused by a shadow object, also known as an anti-moon. That's a satellite of the sun. Lunar eclipses happen when the shadow of this object passes in front of the moon. I'm dead. <laughs> I'm so excited. I quit. <laughs> okay, so in relation to the Earth, so imagine the sun and the moon orbiting parallel, so directly above and flat to the Earth. Yes. This shadow object, there, its orbit is slightly tilted, allowing it to pass between the moon and the surface of the Earth. Okay, I got that. Okay. Question, though. Yep. If gravity is an illusion what is keeping that satellite and so, the moon and the sun and the stars the anti-moon or that goes between the moon and the earth mm -hmm. i'm you, just you didn't answer my question i'm glad you got that <laughs> <laughs> so the shadow object is not viewable during the day for the same reason we don't see other celestial bodies during the day the sun's so bright exactly i shine so bright <laughs> <laughs> Ashley's so done. <laughs> Rebecca, are you okay? <laughs> I love this so much. <laughs> so, additionally, so you know how during lunar eclipses there are going to be a red tint? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The red tint happens because the shadow object is not dense enough at the edges to block all the light emitted from the sun. It's like holding up your hand to a flashlight. Mm. Yeah. If the, so Earth, the shadow object has blood, mm, it's red. So, if the spherical earth was real then the moon wouldn't turn red during a lunar eclipse we know that the earth is pretty solid therefore if the earth was spherical during a lunar eclipse there should be a ring of red around the earth's distinct shadow and the moon moon wouldn't completely turn red like it does the fuck is wrong with these people <laughs> <laughs> um could you have read about now right. okay <laughs> I love this subject so much. I'm so glad. I really wish yourself. everybody could see how happy Rebecca <laughs> has right now. So, solar eclipses happen when the Earth passes through the shadow of the moon during the day. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Go back because I was distracted. So, solar eclipses happen when the Earth passes through the shadow of the moon during the day. Okay. Why wouldn't there be a. Okay, keep going. So, this happens when the sun, moon, and observer are nearly aligned on a straight line when the moon is close to the ecliptic. The sun, moon, and the observer. Yeah. <laughs> but remember, the sun and the moon are also orbiting in the same plane. Yeah, that's... that. Yeah. So... Is that? <laughs> so, to my right, I have Tiffany trying to I'm trying make to sense this. of the story and... 
Ashley to the left of me having the face I did during the Philly experiment. <laughs> Fair. Um, Tiffany's trying to process it so she can learn something new. I really, I'm trying, I do this a lot and it usually backfires on me. I'm trying to see things from the perspective of the believer here. And Which is on the ground. Mm-hmm. Seeing the shadow of the moon from the sun. But the shadow and the sun are, or the moon and the sun. Okay, whatever. We'll roll with it. <laughs> I've believed less for more, so no. more. Do you less. know how lunar eclipses work? I do. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Wow, Ashley. I'm just making sure I love you, but we don't all know all things, okay? So, when the path of eclipses is drawn in a flat earth map, the path creates either arcs or full circles. As opposed to if you try to draw this on a map that represents a spherical earth, you get a bunch of weird squiggly lines. That represents the earth. Wait, what? The weird I, I don't think spherical is a necessary descriptor (laughs) (laughs) i think you could just say stay with me ashley (laughs) we need to get something on this table okay so even today nasa is able to predict eclipses because ignoring the fact they still use ancient astrological charts that were created before the idea of round earth those charts would be generated through the same method now which is just through observation Hmm. would you like a drink break i'm I think yeah. this would be a good spot. <laughs> would you like a drink break? Yeah, probably not a bad idea. Would you like me to mix something up for y'all? Uh, the stronger the better, please. How about a flat cup? <laughs> Hi, this is Edward October for OctoberPodVHS.com. Here to tell you what people are saying about our true crime podcast. A thread store in Arizona says, too much dribble and slang. These ladies obviously enjoy their own humor and sound high. Hey, at least they called you ladies. Benny from Idaho says, your topics are so appealing, but a three-person pod is difficult enough to follow without banter. Um, our true crime podcast only has two people wait 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 wait. where's the other 100 five-star reviews can somebody give me the five-star reviews okay here we go much better luscious lee says stand up five stars you girls are funny af i especially love the me and mrs jones rendition you sneak into the recording cherry g 107 says i struggle finding a new podcast and so far i've been hooked to you guys podcast keep up the good work thumbs up thumbs up smiley face our true crime podcast, two girls, one story, and lots of bad renditions of songs you love. Available on your favorite podcatcher. Go binge it today. Welcome back, guys. Thanks. Give me the good stuff. I don't know why she's so excited about this. Look, I'm normally the one that people are rolling their eyes at. And right now you are rolling your eyes hard at her. Not at her. Keep that straight. Okay. At her top. At the words coming out of her mouth. Yes. Okay. I'm going to start telling myself. Do you understand the words coming out of my mouth? I'm going to start telling myself. Nobody understands the words coming out of your mouth. Right right now, no. Nobody rolls their eyes at me. Just at the words that come out of my mouth. So it's fine. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) We'll go with that, my love. So you guys ready to hear how they tested the flat earth theory? Yes. Sure. Let's do it. You have to test theories. Yeah. Um, That's why it's a theory, not a hypothesis, because it's been repeatedly tested. Repeatedly. Oh, God. Can't (laughs) wait. How do I get on these? Like, Hopefully they just ran until they ran out of space or temperature. Well, they can't because Antarctica is guarded by governing. Anyway. And absolute zero. That's what I said. That's a temperature. hit. Until they hit nothing or zero. That is a temperature, but if atoms stop moving, which is what is theorized, then you will be stopped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I pay attention. (laughs) Teach me things, woman. (laughs) You will literally be stopped. (laughs) All right. So we're going to talk about the experiments that were performed. So the first one and one of the more almost notorious ones that I see popping up all the time is the Bedford level experiment. Okay. So this experiment was a series of observations that was carried out on a six mile long section of Old Bedford River in Norfolk, England. 
Mm-hmm. The experiment was based on the idea that because of the curvature of the Earth, an object should become partially visible the farther away it, it gets from the observer until eventually becoming completely hidden by the curvature of the Earth. Okay. So. Makes sense. In a six mile? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but no, it actually makes sense because yeah. due to the curvature of the Earth and the way math works and arcs and geometry, you shouldn't be able to see see certain height things when it's six miles away yeah. ashley you're thinking georgia where we're like hilly and lots of trees think back to when you go visit your family no i'm thinking the, the exact opposite like a six mile stretch is nothing oh okay for them to test that theory like I, I but mathematically six- that's when it should either partially disappear or completely disappear due to the curvature of the earth okay yeah i think that's accurate so with my degree and all <laughs> lay, lay that out on the table real quick <laughs> to prove my point check this degree so the first recorded person to make this type of observation was samuel burley Rowbotham in 1838 and the first experiment was performed at go figure old bedford river ah. um samuel waded into the river with his telescope and held it eight inches above the water to watch a boat which had a flag on its mast three feet above the water sail away from him He reported that the boat had stayed fully in his view all the way until it reached Walney Bridge. According to his calculations, the top of the mast should have been 11 feet below his line of sight when it reached six miles. Well, your calculations were wrong. No, they weren't. I looked at them. Oh, (laughs) wow. (laughs) That was the most Rebecca (laughs) statement I've ever heard. <laughs> all of these face. all of these logical questions we've been asking her where she's like shoot i forgot to look at that this one she's like i know this one i actually looked at and like that makes sense and if you guys want me to i can tell you nope why. i'm good but thanks okay i'll tell ashley how it works later okay okay so he published his observations in 1849 and eventually wrote the book Earth, Not a Globe, which was published in 1865. So in 1901, Henry Yule Oldham, a geography reader at King's College in Cambridge, conducted the experiment above with the same results. In May of 1904, Lady Anne Blunt hired a photographer with a telephoto lens to take a picture from Walney of a large white sheet she had hung that touched the surface of the river from Rao Botham's original position and had the same results. So this experiment has been repeated and has had the same results. So the difference is 11 feet? Yeah. Between, so by the time the original boat observed went six miles, the top of the mast should have been 11 feet below the circumference of the earth. Okay. Which means he couldn't have been able to see it at all. And they're saying they can still partially see it? Yep. Oh, they can see the entire thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see what you're saying now. I'm They're saying like, no matter how far feet in how a far six away mile gets. radius or a six mile distance is yeah. nothing. But got yeah, it. well, I'd say this is probably just one of those magical places where like fairies and spirits and sprites and all that realm and are roaming. They're like, you know what? We're just gonna fuck with some people. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like that's not far enough away like i feel like it would get smaller but you'd still be able to see it it gets smaller but you still see it his theory was because of the, the earth itself should have blocked it from his sight due to the curvature of the earth yeah but you do understand that on top of the curvature of the earth we have like different heights and peaks and ranges it's this is, not this is over a river but there's still differing okay heights. i assume it's not like a white river rapids or something like that I assume it's like a calm river I'm, no, you don't assume in science. Okay, I didn't specifically look at it, but like <laughs> the point is, based on the math behind the curvature of the Earth and how geometry works, like you could repeat this on the ocean and still have the same results. Okay. If the ocean was calm. Okay. Ass- Assuming she almost said that word again. I heard it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on board. That's all that matters. All right. When I say the Earth is flat. What is one of the first things y'all think of as evidence proving me wrong? Space travel. <laughs> like we've no, seen which, the earth. Which, ha- which has had pictures of earth. Yes. Those are wrong and this is why. Because they faked the moon landing? Exactly. Well, yeah, we'll get to that. So 
<laughs> Ashley just bl- blew a fuse. Okay, so <laughs> the reason we can't trust photographic evidence is because it's too easily manipulated or altered. Mm. Additionally, camera lenses can cause barrel distortion, which can show an inaccurate depiction of the Earth, i.e. a sphere, especially when references are not in the picture. Because this is something really common photographers see, especially if you guys are familiar with what a, what a fish lens is. Yes. yes. So, and you can see how it like distorts everything around you. So, lenses will do that. Okay. Lenses cause distortion in the photos. Okay, but it doesn't take away the fact that half of the bodies of land are missing from that picture and it's not surrounded by a giant circle of ice. What bodies of land are missing? Well, when you take a picture of the earth, you only see half of the earth. Because yeah. those pictures are all doctored and manipulated. <laughs> and there's not a ring of ice around the earth. Because those aren't real pictures. Those are something distributed to us. Look, the government does a lot of things and they don't want you to know about most of them. I'm sorry, but Trump is not smart enough to keep this ploy up. <laughs> so if this is the case, not, we'll all find it's out It's not just soon. him. It's him and a couple other countries. Everything's a conspiracy. Everything. Everything. All right. Now we're going to dive into the conspiracy. It's Devil huge. Moon. There is not officially a flat versus r- flat earth versus round earth conspiracy as in no formal group is attempting to convince that the concept of a round earth is part of a conspiracy put together by nasa as in nasa is not the one propagating this okay no because nasa is a government funded instead the purpose of nasa is to fake the concept of space travel to further america's militaristic dominance of space space force oh my god <laughs> that's the exact same thing <laughs> Okay, maybe he is smart enough. <laughs> so Sorry, here, Trumpy. So here's a quote from President Lyndon B. Johnson in 1958. Control of space means control of the world. From space, the masters of infinity would have the power to control the Earth's weather, to cause drought and flood, to change the tides and raise the levels of the sea, to divert the Gulf Stream and change temperate climates to frigid. There is something more important than the ultimate weapon, and that's the ultimate position. The position of total control over the Earth that lies somewhere in outer space. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I lost Tiffany. Um, Tiffany has blown a fuse now. So a month after saying this, President Johnson and the Senate Special Committee on Space and Astronautics drafted a resolution to change the name of the U.S. Army's ballistic missile arsenal to the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Yup. Which is NASA. Yep. Oh, okay. (laughs) I I lost (laughs) Tiffany. I'm sure I'm real hard to stay on board. Okay. So in the early years of NASA, their initial research had an awful track record with one rocket failing after another rocket failing after another. Like they couldn't get these things to work. At some point, reportedly soon after the Apollo 1 disaster, the decision was made to fake the program by using rockets that only had to fly high enough until they were out of sight. Makes sense. Okay. This is important because soon after this decision is when launches at NASA went from failures to higher and higher rates of success. To where? They just went up high enough to be out of sight. Yeah, until we couldn't see them. And then what happened? They're just gone. Because if the Earth was flat, they would just fall right back down on the Earth. They eventually come back. (laughs) Look, the, re- the reason NASA portrays the Earth as round is because NASA thinks it's round. This is because... <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. Let me, let me continue with this. <laughs> this is based off of the teaching handed down to us all the way from the ancient Greeks. Since a round globe was accepted by the population as the shape of the Earth, it was easy for NASA to choose how they wanted to display the Earth. Of course, because it's a collection. So after the end of the Cold War... This ruse was kept up to allow funding to not only continue fake space travel, but to embezzle it. Well, it cut funding to most of it, so that Appar- screws that pooch. Apparently, the embezzling wasn't working. Yeah, well, <laughs> you win some, you lose some. <laughs> okay. Wow, that is that is what I got on Flat Earth. Isn't it fascinating? That is so much fun. Isn't it's it? Something. I just, oh, this makes me happy. I did see something the whole time we've been talking. I was thinking about um, a meme I saw where it had a picture of the Earth and uh, all the plan or all the planets, wow, all of the um, continents, and they drew like a cat batting a ball of yarn, and it said Earth isn't flat because the cat would have knocked the ball of yarn off. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> what? Cat science. Yeah. <clears throat> I have a cat. Yeah. I think cat. They do knock things off. Often. Yeah. Fair. But Often. Oh, man. This is exciting. You know what? Don't you dare. <laughs> Would you let me finish my sentence? No. Damn. Well, I'm going to anyway. <laughs> that was fascinating. That's what you said. You said that was fascinating. You know what? I'm intrigued. Don't believe it at all. Load of crock. But I had never heard that about Lyndon B. Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> But see, the thing was, I know you. If I said that before we started recording, you been you would have been like, "Who?" No. Wow. You two seem to think I'm super stupid. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's it. This has been fun. Which I don't think you are super stupid. Damn. <laughs> I don't. Well, I knew who Lyndon B. Johnson was. Thank you very much. I forgot what you said that. Made me think, wow, she thinks I'm stupid, but I'll hear it when they listen back uh, to this. I asked if you knew how lunar eclipses work. Ah, yep, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> cardiopulmonary resuscitation. <laughs> okay, well then. It's all out of love, I promise. I know. But yeah, it was fascinating. And I'm so happy to see you so giddy. Like you. I think this is the happiest I've seen you. So I was, covering I've topic. started re- researching. It was like, 11 30 on a sunday morning i got to the space conspiracy thing and i'm like i need a beer (laughs) (laughs) yeah yes you do lots of alcohol consumption for this episode. too early for this oh that's magnificent Mm -hmm. and this is something people actually legitimately believe yeah so one of my cousins where he works there's a very very adamant flat earther there and when i was researching i got to the point about the whole nasa thing and i texted him i'm like i can't remember if you told me this or not but is this guy, does he think the moon landing was fake? He goes, yes. How did you know that? I'm like, hmm, um, listen to an upcoming episode. <laughs> now, I knew a lot of people still believe that the moon landing was fake. Mm-hmm. So that didn't surprise me. But this whole flat earth thing. Isn't it fascinating? It is. It's something. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it would be like a Doctor Who episode, speaking of your space whales. I know, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. That's another question. How do they hide the turtle in the pictures? They didn't take the pictures. You'd have to be underneath. The pictures were faked. S- well, yeah, but even if they got just high enough to where they were out of sight and they tried to take a picture and then they doctored the photos, the turtle's underneath it. Well, it's on a shell. We yeah. Okay. We don't know how far past the ice wall the earth extends. We also don't know how big the turtle is. I mean, you and told also us- whether or not we see the turtle based on it. Is based on how high up we are. You told us the dimensions of flat Earth, the theorized the dimensions flat Earth of Earth inside portion, the ice wall. Not the ice oh, wall. okay. We don't know what's beyond the ice wall. Got it. We don't know what's there. Got it. Okay. Makes more sense. Because yeah. it's guarded by aliens. They, no, they won't let us go past there. Governing forces. The aliens. Trump is telling us we can't <laughs> go past the ice wall. <laughs> See, he already has a wall. <laughs> Lay off Mexico. God. Plus so on America. This podcast, we will not get political or. <laughs> I mean, am I wrong? If that's what it is. He's getting too wall happy. Today, Rebecca loses it. Tiffany laughs, and Ashley has opinions. <laughs> <laughs> Which that never happens. Nope. <laughs> nope. Man, I am so happy to see Ashley so done with the topic and me so <laughs> enthralled. Like, I feel like. I feel like your name should be Rebecca right now on this episode. <laughs> You're Ashley. I am a temporary Hufflepuff. <laughs> yes, you're an honorary Hufflepuff oh, for this geez. episode. I would say welcome, but I know it won't last. <laughs> Fair. Just wait till next week. See that euphoria you feel right now? That's what it's like to be a Hufflepuff all the time. Mm-hmm. That's not true because I brought you M&Ms today to make you feel better. Look, that's just because my body was like, you want to bleed? You want to bleed? No, well, you're gonna. <laughs> surprise bitch no babies for you being a woman sucks sometimes mm-hmm. anyway Anyways. anyway <laughs> <laughs> remember friends everyone has something that they find odd let us tell you about it 
<laughs> I can't say tell you why it's not after she just talked about flat earth. I'm sorry. So remember, friends, everyone has something that they find odd. We'll tell you about it. If you have any questionable topics you'd like us to discuss, or if you have your opinions on flat earth yes. and why you think it's correct, you can share them with us on any of our social medias. Links can be found on our website, theladiesestrange.com, or you can email the, them to us at theladiesestrange at gmail.com. And if you go on our website, you can find Ashley's Twitter handle and send them to her. Yes. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> I have no filter, especially on Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. And if you think we're doing a great job and want to support the show, you can find us on Patreon. Keep it strange, lovelies. And keep it round. Oh, it just like don't. a plate. Yes, plates are round. Spherical. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Oh, do you think it'd be like a waterfall going over the edge where the ice is starting to melt? Just like, if there is an edge. There is because it's flat. There's got to be an end. There has no, to be an end. We're leaving. No, there has to be. Oh, unless it's a Why snow things globe. Things don't happen. Oh.